to the daily politics. I mean, first of all, your main thrust of your campaign is to pull out of the EU. But with the main parties focusing very much on the economy, is this the right time to do something like that which could destabilise the economy? Well, we, we say that you can't really solve the problems of the economy or indeed immigration, which I think is the other main issue in this election, if you stay in the European Union. And it is absolutely the moment to concentrate on pulling out of the EU when you consider its massive cost. Um, how, much, how much would the country save, as far as you're concerned, by pulling out of the EU? Well, the um, most authoritative estimate we have of that comes from the Taxpayers' Alliance, which puts the cost of our overall membership of the European Union, that's including uh, the European Commission's own figure for uh, uh, your over-regulation at 6% of GDP, uh, the overall cost has been estimated at £120 billion a year. Now, I'm not saying we uh, withdraw from the treaties of Rome and save that money immediately, but over a period of time, th that is the sort of magnitude we're talking about. But you, you already said um, this morning at your launch that you want to cut national insurance, cut taxes in general, create new grammar schools, double the number of prison places, spend 40% more than is currently spent on defence, free eye and dental care. That sounds very expensive, a lot more than you are going to save in well, certainly the first year of coming out of the EU. Yes, How will I mean, you pay for that? None of this happens overnight. We, we also are impressed by the estimate um, from the Institute of Directors and the Taxpayers Alliance. Uh, which have produced a, a report saying how to save 50 billion, and that can come off uh, very quickly. Well, how, how long would you get? How long that, would you that, take the 50 to billion, actually the 50 save 50 billion? billion the 50 public? billion, if you look at that, I think can come off. It isn't cuts. I mean, it's just it's just not carrying out massive waste in the quangocracy and in the civil service and all so that. You, so that that could be done in a year. The but, 50 billion. But, but bearing in mind the main parties have been squabbling about taking six billion pounds out of the economy. You say that you could find £50 billion pounds Absolutely. without frontline Absolutely. cuts within the next six, nine months. I mean, that, that is a measure of how out of touch the failed old parties, as we now call them, are. They have been arguing, actually, about half of that. I think they've been arguing about half the national uh, insurance um, increase. Uh, and so that's, they've been squabbling about £3 billion. But we really must look at how... What a predicament we're in. The government is spending 700 billion a year. The tax take is 540. Now that leaves a deficit every year of 160 billion pounds a year. It's not much point in talking about 3 billion. And by 2013, the accumulated de deficit, which is the national debt, will, uh, will amount to 2.1.4. Um, uh, uh, Sorry, I get mixed up with my. 1.4 squil trillion. 1.4 trillion. Right. I mean, uh, these, and, and these are, these these, are very these, Figures. figures to talk about. Yeah, but um, we've got to and, talk about it yes. because the public don't understand them at the moment. Well, and and obviously you are, you know, aiming your fire at the, the two other main parties. Failed um, old. Well, <laughs> but then why are you not standing against six Conservative candidates and one Labour candidate, you say you're not going to because they're Eurosceptic. But surely if you have your manifesto and you believe so strongly that they're failed parties, how can you allow these candidates to be returned? Well, not only are we going to allow, we're going to actively campaign for them and try and get them in. But what uh, does that say to the electorate there? Well, what it says to the electorate is that UKIP is putting its country before its party. And uh, under the under the proportional representation system in the European elections, we actually came second. Uh, we beat the government of the day, we beat the Liberal Democrats. So under a, a more reasonable system of, of, of election, we did very well. Under the present absurd system of first You're going to be lucky to get a seat? Well, I'm not... You know, no, no. We, we'll get several seats, I hope. I, I'm not going to be, you, you, I'm not going really to be drawn on. I hope so. I hope so. Of course I do. We're fielding 500 candidates. But it, it, the, the seats you mention, these are people who, if we stand, they won't get in. And I don't want to do that. I want these but people... you said it would be a disaster um, if the Tories, you said, came back to govern and this it would help... It is not an do... exact science. And if my policy of uh, fighting to get uh, half a dozen Tories and uh, uh, Labour, and there may be more coming, if that results in David Cameron then getting the working majority he needs for five years and then no referendum, and then we're really... Uh, it's the end of this country because after five more years of integration, that's the end. So then my, my, the, the strategy will have failed. Yes, uh, I, you I want a hung parliament. You want a hung parliament. Because out of that we will get uh, a system of proportional representation. But the big prize for us is the system of binding referendums at national and local level that they have in Switzerland. That's the only way, really, to reconnect the British people Lord, with their democracy. Lord Pearson, thank you. Thank you.
Now it's coming up to midday here on BBC Two. You're watching the Daily Politics election special. Coming up in the next half hour.